Hello, my name is Patrick Standard. I'm a supervising animator here at Powerhouse Animation, and today I'm going to be doing a pro tip on breakdowns. A breakdown drawing is technically an in-between, as in it is placed between two keyframes. Now, saying that a breakdown is just an in-between is kind of like saying that Milt Call was just an animator. Yes, it's true, but it kind of fails to capture the scope of what we're talking about. If the keys dictate where your animation is going to and where your animation is coming from, the main storytelling poses of your scene, then the breakdowns are what tell you how you're going to get there. Imagine that your arc of motion is a pathway or a road on a road map. The key drawings are your destinations. They're where you're going to and where you're coming from. The breakdowns are the checkpoints that you place along the way. All right. So to demonstrate this, I've created this kind of wonky character in a scene. Now the scene has our character here and a can of beans. Now our character really wants that can of beans. So what's he going to do? He's going to reach over and he's going to grab it. So the breakdown drawings are the next level of drawings to place in your timeline. All right, so let's look at the keys we have and get an idea of how we're going to go from point A to point B. We can take a few different paths to get there from our first key to our second, and here's how. If I draw my breakdown drawing with the hand up here, then the hand will move up before reaching down to grab the can of beans. This creates a pretty standard arc of motion. Alternatively, I can put the breakdown drawing below the two key poses, like so. This will make his hand swing down before it comes up to grab the can of beans. This creates a more complex arc of motion to follow, but you can see how where I put my breakdown drawing shows how my arc of motion is going to follow. I can also move the breakdown drawing into the background, creating a more three-dimensional arc that dips into the depth of our scene. We are drawing in 2D but we are representing a fictional three-dimensional space. And it's good to keep that in mind when you're putting in your breakdowns as well as your key drawings. Okay, so we realize that the positioning of our breakdown drawings can dictate the arc of movement, so now it's time to show how your breakdowns can also dictate the overlap of your movement. If you don't know what overlap is, overlap is the secondary motion dictated by the primary mass in movement. I want you to think of pigtails on a girl that's swinging and how they follow her movement. Drag behind her when she swings forward or in front of her when she swings back. Specifically, there will be a point at which she is changing direction, but the pigtails are still following the first direction because they haven't caught up to the main mass yet. This phenomenon is known as overlap. Here's how breakdowns influence overlap. We'll take our first breakdown drawing, the one that drove the arc up, and we'll notice that in the first drawing, his wrist is kind of in a claw position, and in the second drawing, his wrist is tilted upward because he's resting his hand on the can of beans. So to go from point A to point B, we could, if we wanted to, just rotate that wrist about halfway and let it do it. But that's it's a little robotic. It's a little not lifelike, not organic. But if we bring his wrist up in the breakdown, our character will anticipate his grab. See, this is because in order to get from key A to key B, he has to go through the breakdown checkpoint that we've drawn, thus meaning we'll have to swing his wrist up before bringing him back down straight with the can of beans. You can layer this by applying that same method to the fingers, to the elbow, to the shoulder, and so on and so on. If you pay attention to the mechanics of your animation in your breakdown drawings, you will cut most of the guesswork involved in the remaining labor needed to complete the animation. Not only will this make your animation more efficient and expedient, it will also strengthen the readability of your animation early on in the animating process. If you have to stop at any point and revisit your animation, getting the foundations of your motion in early will make it easier to pick it back up again. In a studio environment such as Powerhouse Animation, it makes shots easier to pass on to other animators down the pipeline. Oft times, you may not be the only person working on any particular shot, and may need to pass it off to a cleanup artist or an in-betweener. This process helps ensure that the final product will look closer to how you envisioned it by leaving less room for interpretation to those who come after you. And that is how you do breakdowns in your animation. If you'd like to see more pro tips, 
You can check them out at powerhouseanimation.com. Thank you for watching.